Joshua Hart at that end, at the far left. He gave up flying and car ownership and began to campaign for environmental and social change. He has worked as a professional transportation planning advocate for the last 10 years at Rails to Trails Conservancy and the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition. I'm a member. His research, entitled Driven to Excess, presents the social and quality of life impacts of automobile traffic on local residents, and it was covered in over 100 international media outlets. Lonely Planet excerpted his writing in the book Flightless, Incredible Journeys Without Leaving the Ground. As Kevin mentioned, um, I gave up my car about 10 years ago after learning about the... <laughs> and, you know, people said, oh, you know, you're, you're so selfless, you're a sacrifice, you know, and I gave up flying three years ago. After learning, you know, more about what car dependence and plane dependence means for uh, people, and people are being hurt by, by our activities, and people say, oh, you know, you're, you're so you're selfless, and what a sacrifice you made. I don't feel like that. I feel like I've given up smoking. After I did when I gave up smoking, I, when I was a smoker, I was like, I'm, you know, living without cigarettes is going to be so horrible. But then it's so much better. Like as a cyclist, I get to breathe fresh air. I get to say hi to my friends. I've been getting fit. I don't have this car, you know, uh, hanging around my, my neck. And and you know, I discovered that when I take surface travel, when I take the train or when I take the boat, I get to experience the communities that are along the route, and it's much more of a real travel experience than just traveling from one generic airport to the other. So I'm speaking not as an expert about carbon offsetting, because I'm not, but as someone who's talked to a lot of people who are, and as someone who's observed the world uh, and what's going on. And I just want to say, start out by saying that I think that offsets and, and carbon trading are a way for the current powers that be to make a lot of money off of a bubble that is being created along the same lines as the real estate crisis. I think that it's a way to continue the status quo of fossil fuel addiction. And it is an addiction. We are pouring 5 billion tons of carbon into the atmosphere every year. And, you know, if you talk to a smoker, you can't just quit smoking by having one less cigarette every day. You need to have a quit day. You need to hit rock bottom and decide, this is not working for me. This is going to kill me. And we, we can't go on like this. So carbon offsets are a psychological mechanism for people and for companies and for countries to use to avoid taking the necessary steps that we need to take to reduce our emissions directly. James Hansen, who many of you may know, uh, is one of the most respected scientists. He worked for NASA. He, he brought the, the, the crisis of, of, of climate change to the attention of the US Congress. As a private citizen, he says that carbon trading is a false solution that dangerously distracts attention from the urgent need to pursue pathways to real and rapid emissions reductions. And when experts are looking at the different types of offsets, the voluntary offset, offsetting your flights, it's been labeled the Wild West because there is no accountability. People are making a lot of money off of this. They're expanding damaging industries. And, and it's resulting in an increase of emissions, not a decrease. So this issue goes into a lot of deeper issues like can we green capitalism, which we you know, may not have time to get into today. I don't think we can. I think capitalism is, is, a, is a way of looking at the world that values short-term profits over defending human health and safety. And it is, it is time we, we put a stop to it and move beyond it to another system. Anyone who, anyone who watched Copenhagen unfold realizes now that the current system of governments in the world and the corporations who run them are not going to solve this problem for us. They are going to delay action uh, and make as much profit off of selling fossil fuels as possible. And if it's going to come a solution, we need to come from the bottom, from the grassroots, from the people. And that is beginning to happen in the countries around the world. I spent uh, time in the UK the last three years as part of climate camp. Uh, and it's going to involve a mass campaign of direct action. You know, we've got to realize that, um, put this in the context of a larger environmental threat that's happening. Toxics in our bodies, in the atmosphere, a lack of respect for biodiversity, animals, uh, a, a dangerously increasing carbon level in the atmosphere, deforestation, exploitation of the world's poor, and exploitation of factory farm animals. Most people in the world are good. They don't. They wouldn't, you know, do this stuff intentionally. But the system is putting us in a position where we are we are forced to live our lives in a way that causes damage to other people and to other living things on this planet, and that is very very bad. 
You know, Albert Einstein said that the significant problems that we face today cannot be solved at the same level of thinking that we were at when we created them. And I think that using a market mechanism like carbon trading is not only uh, a blinker approach to the problem, it is an arrogant approach. Because we have been responsible for this problem in, in the global north, right here. Uh, the climate change issue is not an issue that everyone in, on the planet is in it together. Uh, it, it's at its root a class issue. Uh, globally, the wealthiest 15% of the population are responsible for 75% of all emissions. And we, in sitting in this room, are part of that 15%, whether we like to admit it or not. There's a tremendous amount of denial going on about this issue. And, and our emissions are, make, are going to make, are, are making and are going to make the lives of the three billion poorest people on this planet intolerable, and suffer, sufferable, and, and, uh, and it's going to take away their livelihoods. So, so we, are, we are flying, we are driving, we are consuming because we have wants. And those wants are taking away people's needs. That's happening right now, and we need to put a stop to it. Just to go over a couple of reasons why I think that carbon offsetting is a bad uh, thing. You know, there's a, a group of people in Wales, in England, put together this, this corporation called Cheap Neutral. And uh, basically, if, you, you know, if you're at a party or whatever, and you're married, and you, you know, happen to slip up, have one too many drinks or whatever, and you know, find yourself in bed with someone else, well, you know, you can just offset that infidelity by paying someone else to remain faithful. And it's okay because the overall level of infidelity in the atmosphere will remain the same. <laughs> and there's something wrong with this equation. Like, it's immoral to cheat on your partner. It's immoral to emit unsustainable levels of carbon dioxide. And, and no offsetting that is going to make a difference. Once carbon is in the air, it's in the air for over 100 years. And there's no offsetting that. There's no taking that back. The problem with offsetting is that it's, it's a, it, it puts a, a, an assumption that we are going to destroy every forest, that we are going to burn all the fossil fuels. And, and uh, that assumption, it only works if we do all that. So basically, uh, it depends on a system that is unsustainable. Um, we have a, a limited carbon budget, and we need to keep that carbon budget for heating and lighting and basic things that we need. Uh, flying around the world on holidays is not something that we need to do to survive. We need to act, uh, start acting like that. Um, I want to just put a, a, a call out. You know, that next Thursday there's a protest being uh, arranged by the Mobilization for Climate Justice at noon in front of the Marriott Marquis uh, on Fourth Street, just south of Market, and we're going to have uh, some speeches. We're going to have music. There's going to be some um, maybe some direct action, who knows? But if you want to come and get involved, uh, you know, people that brought about the, the climate crisis, the people that brought about the real estate crisis, these, these are the people that are now trying to profit from disaster. And it's, it's immoral, it's arrogant, and in retrospect, in history, we will look at it as criminal. Uh, that it is, it is a moral issue whether we are, we are depriving the people in the developing world of their livelihoods because we lead a very comfortable lifestyle. We've been, uh, we've been leading, we've been you know, having a party. It's been a big, big party and we've been enjoying ourselves. It's been extraordinarily comfortable. Uh, but you know, the party is over and cheap fossil fuels are coming to an end. Our communities are remarkably, remarkably uh, vulnerable to you know to shocks created by the high prices of the fossil fuels. So we need to we need to have real reductions. We need to change the system. Offsets are a distraction to that system, and they make me sick.